OK, so from GCSE, you would have come across something called composite functions. OK, um, if you, does, any, does anybody do um, DT and what like a composite material might be in DT? Pardon? Yeah, it's like a mix. It's like two things that have been composed together, OK? So in, that's really what composite means. It means two things together. And you can see how this is going to apply in the context of maths here. So it says, sometimes we may apply, let me check that's on, we may apply multiple functions in succession to an input. These combined functions together are known as a composite function. So what you might have in this diagram that we've got here if you take an input value x and you apply a function f, you produce f of x, which is the output. If you then apply a g function, which is just a different function to f of x, you get g f of x. Now, the thing that people um, can sometimes find a bit confusing here is if you apply f and then g, you end up writing g f in that kind of way. And that sort of makes sense because when you say that the function is applying to something, when the function applies to x, you don't write x and then the function. You always are writing the letter before the input. So that's why when you see something like g of f of x, g of f of x, it actually means that this function has been done first and then this function has been done second. You could put brackets, but actually this is kind of cumbersome to write. So mathematicians have got lazy with this, and they just write g of f of x. Okay. So what it says down here, you can see it with these extra brackets, g of f of x actually means do the g function to the f function that has been done to x, which means do f applied first and then g. We just don't write those extra brackets because we use it so commonly in maths that it just is, is time saved when we don't write it. So you've probably seen some of these things before at GCSE. So hopefully this is just going to be a bit of a recap. So it says, first of all, if f of x is x squared plus 1 and g of x is 4x minus 2, we're going to work out what some of these different things are that we have. So first of all, we've got f of g of 2, which means, first of all, we need to work out what g of 2 is. And g of 2 is 6, because 4 times 2 minus 2 is 6. So f of g of 2 is actually saying, put g of 2 into the function, so put 6 into the function. And when you put 6 into the function, you get 37. So f of g of 2 is 37. So it's kind of just giving you instructions of like what to put into the machines, like how how you can do multiple functions. Uh, the examples we've all got here have just got two composite functions. In theory, you could have three functions, four functions, n functions. It could go through any number of composite functions. So now I want to work out what is the general function f of g of x. So this means taking g of x and putting it into the function f. So that means that f of g of x, I'm going to take this function here and I'm going to place it in the place that I would normally do the substitution. So I'm going to have, instead of x squared, I will put g where the input was. So it will be 4x minus 2, all squared, plus 1. So it's like putting a, an expression, you're substituting an expression into another expression. You're putting a function inside a function. So f of g of x is 4x minus 2 squared plus 1. If you wanted to, you could expand the brackets and simplify I'm not that bothered with it right now because we're just exploring the ideas of things that we've got here. Do you think that g of f of x is going to be the same as f of g of x? No, so the order matters here for how you do these kinds of things. So g of f of x means you're going to take f of x and you're going to put it into g of x, wherever, there's, uh, wherever you would normally substitute. So what would that look like, g of f of x? 4 brackets x squared plus 1 minus 2. So this time, this thing has gone inside here. And then we've got f squared x. What do you think f squared x means? Good. f squared x, I've actually got it written down here, actually means you're going to do f of x and you're going to do that again. So you're going to take whatever comes from f of x and you're going to put it in. So f squared x actually means f of f of x. So you're going to take this thing and you're going to put it inside its own function. 
So what would that look like? X squared plus 1 squared plus 1. And you can kind of see it, can't you? You can see the function within the function. You can actually kind of spot that, that pattern that's happening. And then the last question that we've got here is to solve that g of f of x is equal to 38. Have we worked out what g of f of x is anywhere on the page? Yeah, we did. So g of f of x is actually this thing that we've got here. So for this equation that we have down here, it's as simple as just taking that information. So if g of f of x is 38, g of f of x is 4 brackets x squared plus 1 minus 2, and that is equal to 38. So I'm just going to solve that equation by adding 2 to both sides, dividing both sides by 4, subtracting 1, and square rooting to get that x is plus or minus 3. So in a minute, when we do some practice on this, you might be asked to solve equations that say stuff like a composite function is equal to a number, or even a composite function is equal to a different composite function. You just work out what they are in terms of x, and then set up the equation and just solve the equation in whichever way you would normally do. Okay? If there was a restriction, though, on the values of x, if they had said something in the question like the domain of x is that x is greater than or equal to 0, what would you need to be careful of in my blue writing that I did? Yeah, the solutions here, one of these solutions wouldn't actually be valid. x would not be allowed to be equal to negative 3 if I had said in the question that the domain of x was that x was greater than 0. So it depends. Make sure you look back at what the domain is, because it might give you some information about how you finish solving those equations that you've got there. OK? So I'm just going to go on to a few more examples. So we've got a couple of different functions here. This time we've got some uh, modulus functions that are getting involved as well. So first of all, I want to find f of g of 3. In order to find f of g of 3, I obviously need to find out what g of 3 is. What is g of 3? 2, because 3 plus 1 over 2 is 4 over 2, which is 2. So f of g of 3 is actually saying find f of 2, because g of 3 is 2. And f of 2 is going to be the modulus of 2 times 2 minus 8, which is 4 minus 8, which is negative 4. But because it's the modulus, the answer is just 4. So f of g of 3 is 4. Now part b of the question, we are going to find out what the composite function is. We're going to set it to equal x. And then we're going to think about how we solve that equation that we've got there. So let's find out what f of g of x is. f of g of x. So I'm going to take the g function, and I'm going to put it inside the f function. So that is going to be the modulus of 2 x plus 1, whoops, over 2, minus 8 modulus. The 2s here cancel. So it's just x plus 1 minus 8, which is the modulus of x minus 7. So f of g of x is x minus 7 modulus. Good. So we're now actually going to solve this equation, which says f of g of x is equal to x. In other words, this is equal to this. Uh, what should you do when you're trying to solve this equation? What's the first thing you should do when you're solving any equation with modulus in? Your brains have gone because of the exam. Huh? You need to draw a sketch because what you want to do is just solve this equation and solve the negative version of it, but we don't know if they'll both be solutions. So we need to do a sketch to help us find out which ones will actually be true. They might both be true. So I'm going to draw a sketch, and this is good practice to remind us about how we draw modulus graphs. So the modulus of x minus 7, well, let's just draw x minus 7 first of all. So x minus 7 would be 
um, a positive gradient crossing at minus 7. So it would be coming up here like this. But we only want the positive branch. So it's going to be that positive branch and that positive branch there. So this dotted line down here is obviously not going to exist anymore. And then the other line that we would be drawing in is just x. So y equals x. What does y equals x? I'm not even going to ask you. y equals x obviously looks like this. So it would have been wrong to solve x minus 7 equals x and the negated version of this. It would have been wrong to solve them both and take both of their solutions. Which one of these is an invalid solution? This one here is going to be an invalid solution because this branch, which is the, the normal non-negated branch of that graph, will never cross y equals x. So this one here, the non-negated version of the branch, which is this right-hand side of it, will never cross the x. So that's why this one isn't going to give us any solutions. And you can kind of see how it's not going to give any solutions, because um, you just get minus 7 equals 0, which is just doesn't make any sense. So when we finish solving this equation, we get 7 is equal to 2x, or x is equal to 7 over 2. Geometrically, you can see that it would be 7 over 2 as well, because if this is 7 over here and they both have the same gradient, it makes sense that the place they're crossing is halfway at 7 over 2 as well. So it's nice to just see that interpretation. So make sure that it's a modulus graph. You sketch it, you put it on your graphics calculator, whatever you do, just to make sure that you're identifying the correct solutions that there are. OK? Can I go on to the next page? So. We're just going to think about a couple of examples that we've got here. What I'm going to actually ask for you to do is I'm going to ask for you to do this one in just a second, as I've written that it's your turn. But I'm going to do this one here just because I know that logarithms were something we didn't get to look at in as much detail because it was stuff that you were learning remotely. So I'm going to just go through this one here, and I might be able to suggest a few things about these logarithms. And if it doesn't make so much sense now, we will be doing some more stuff on it in the future. So I'm just going to look at this. You're going to try this in a second. We've got the functions f and g are defined by f of x is equal to e to the x plus 2, and g of x is ln of x. Find f of g of x, giving your answer in simplest form. That should really just say part a, but it, it doesn't for some reason. If you're not sure what e, e to the power of x means, e is actually just a number. It's just a special number that we will talk about in a separate lesson. It's a special number that pops up in lots of areas of math. So when it says e to the power of x, it's just any number. It's a particular number that's been raised to the power of x. And ln of x is a natural logarithm. And a logarithm is the inverse operation to doing an exponential function. And the reason it has an n, as in ln, it stands for logarithm natural or natural logarithm. And that's because e is the natural exponential function. So these are inverse functions to each other, which is going to make sense a little bit more as we look at them in the future. So if I'm doing f of g of x, that means I'm going to take g of x and I'm going to put it into f of x. So that is going to be e to the power of ln x plus 2. And if you're doing e to the power of ln x, what would that be? It would just be x, because these are inverse functions to each other. One is raising the power. The other one is doing the opposite that of, well, the inverse of raising to the power. So they sort of cancel out, and you just get that f of g of x is equal to x plus 2. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to have a go at doing this one here. And I want you to be really careful about this notation that we've got down here. So when it's asking you to solve g of g of x, that is putting g of x inside g. g of x all squared is actually just meaning this squared. OK, so just careful with that notation. I'll give you a couple of minutes to have a go at doing this question. We'll go through it in just two minutes, OK?
was going to say it gave a very strange quadratic. Thank you. Okay, if you haven't quite finished it, you can check your answer from the board in just a second. But what I'd like you to do is from exercise 2C, the odd questions. If you have gone over from the lockdown topics, if you've done logarithms and exponentials, please do those questions. If you haven't done, skip them for now and we'll be able to have a look at them in a bit more detail in the future. So it's going to do the odd questions from exercise 2C and we'll see how it goes, okay? 